Hi, I'm Catherine. I'm a spiritual consultant and a Kashi guide. I'm also highly sensitive. And I'd like to talk to you today about what I've learned along the way about thriving instead of just surviving as a highly sensitive person. I found that there are certain things that if I include in my life have really made a difference to me as a highly sensitive person. And um, yeah, I'd like to share those with you because honestly I've struggled most of my life with being highly sensitive and in the way that many highly sensitive people do I shut down my sensitivity and found myself really surviving more than just thriving really just sort of um, getting by and, and seeing my sensitivity as more of a burden than a blessing and what I found by looking after my sensitivity that it's really become you know a, a gift to me and I'm starting to appreciate really the strengths of that and the key for me has been learning to uh, look after myself as a sensitive person and really nurture my sensitivity so there's a few things that I've found to include in my day that have really assisted me now why I'm passionate about sharing that is because I've seen how much it affects us as highly sensitive people when we shut down. You know, if you're a highly sensitive person, you might have noticed that, um, you know, being in environments that don't support your sensitivity, especially spending quite a bit of time in those environments, you can get really tired, depleted burnt out, overwhelmed, and really lose your passion and joy of life. And it doesn't have to be like that, because honestly, when we look after our sensitivity, we can have a really, you know, much more positive experience. And what I've seen in my own life and the life of my clients is that as we start to look after our sensitivity and really nurture that, um, you know, our joy comes back, our passion comes back, our energy comes back and, you know, we can better manage being in the different environments that um, we spend time in um, without becoming depleted and exhausted and also start making choices where we're really looking after ourselves because we're really starting to listen to ourselves because one of the things that happens when we close down our sensitivity is we stop listening, we stop listening to our body, listening to our feelings, just listening to the information that's coming in that can really assist us in looking after ourselves. So what I found is by starting to look, in, look after your sensitivity in a good way, in a healthy way, that you can start to open up your sensitivity again and experience the benefits of that experience really um, you know listening to what your body's telling you and you know that your body knows what you need to do when you need to exercise when you need to sleep and rest and what you need to eat and all those things um, your body tells you what you're feeling what feels good and doesn't feel good so it's really important to be listening to your body and opening up to that information that's meant to be really helping us because as highly sensitive people, what research has shown is that we're picking up a lot of subtle information that other people aren't picking up. That's why we get overloaded and um, overwhelmed by that sometimes because our um, brain and nervous system are just processing a lot more information. Highly sensitive people are actually biologically different. Interesting, eh? So the things um, that I found have helped me a lot are spending time in nature which you know if you watch any of my um, uh, videos or you know see my photos you know I'm always out in nature and um, yeah because nature is such um, a great benefit for everyone but especially for highly sensitive people because we can really just let go of anything we've picked up any negative energies you know any um, stress that really helps us and really taking that positive energy that nature has in abundance so it's you know I think spending nature time in nature every day is a real um, definite for me and um, practicing mindfulness I found really helpful because practicing mindfulness we start to be able to 
observe and you know respond rather than react to things that happen so you know as we practice mindfulness we don't need to shut down so much we can just learn to listen to what's going on to observe it to just be with it without um, reacting or shutting down um, some of the other things that I found are really helpful are um, using essential oils. There's some great essential oils that can really help um, sensitive people, um, yeah, really help with grounding and calming and stress. Um, also grounding I found is a really great practice. Grounding is um, really getting uh, connected with the earth. Um, you know, as if we have roots going down to the earth and we can really connect and um, ground, get really grounded. It really does help. It helps to um, release any stress and negativity that we've picked up and really uh, manage, manage better in dealing with that throughout the day. So, yeah, that's um, what I'd like to share with you today. And in future videos, what I'm going to do is to add in the next video talk a bit about grounding and um, guide you through a um, practice of grounding so that's something that you can incorporate in your life if that interests you so i um, looking forward to sharing that with you and um, if this has resonated with you today and you'd like to talk to me about what's possible for you as a highly sensitive person and you know what positive changes you could make um, through working together and learning to look after sensitivity, learning to uh, nurture your your sensitivity and your actually the gifts in your sensitivity and develop the positive aspects of yourself as a sensitive person. I'd love to speak with you and I've put a, a calendar link below this video. So looking forward to speaking with you and um, to sharing in the next video with you. Thanks for listening.